What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpCentrals.com back with another SketchUp extension overview for you. So in today's video, we're going to talk about an extension that allows you to create different guide planes inside of your models. Before we get started, I want to take a second and thank my newest supporters on Patreon. So big thank you to Glenn Eric Hjortholt, Greg Hammond, Peter Amaranjan, Jack Goodnow, Jeff Osborne, Roger Adams, Sarawan Sara, Frederick Blakely, Carol Hurley, Mark Ballantine, and Carter Carlson. Patreon, as most of you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. One of the perks of being a supporter on Patreon is you get to vote on the extension that I cover every week. So this week, my patrons voted, and they voted on this extension from TIG that allows you to create a work plane inside of SketchUp. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. Plugin name, work plane. Plugin developer, TIG. Plugin cost, it's free. Where can you get it? You can download it from the Sketchication Extension Warehouse at the link in the notes below. WorkPlane is an extension that allows you to draw a plane that acts almost like a guide instead of inside of SketchUp, which can be very useful for inferencing inside of your models. This plane acts like a guide in the sense that it comes into your model and allows you to inference off of it, but it doesn't merge with other geometry or affect the model other than giving you a visual and inferencing indicator. The way it works is fairly simple. There are three kinds of planes you can create, a flat rectangular plane, a round disc shaped plane, and an angle snapping collection of planes that can help you draw angles. The rectangular plane allows you to draw a plane that's pretty much a box. You can draw it flat or along an angle. This basically gives you something to inference to, so you can draw and stay on the same plane without having to worry about any edges you draw merging with any geometry. This can be useful for drawing abnormal faces inside of SketchUp. In addition, the rectangular plane is editable after being created by right-clicking on it. This allows you to edit everything from the location, to the scale, to the size of the grid created on the box. Note that it says at the bottom of the page that you can right-click and adjust the options, but as, um, as SketchUp has progressed, that option has gone away, so you need to draw your plane first and then adjust your plane by right-clicking on it after you've drawn it in order to make these changes. One thing that's worth pointing out is if you want your grid to be the right size, then you need to make sure that you set the size of your grid by entering the size of the face that you want it to be on. So like for example, if you use the scale tool, it's going to throw off your grid. So if I go into adjust and I look at this, you can see how this is set to have a width and height of 10 feet and then a grid width of one foot and one foot. Well, because I came in here and I scaled this and I'm just going to place this back on the corner. Because I came in, in here and scaled this, you can see how these aren't actually one foot by one foot. They've been scaled up. So in this case, we wouldn't want to draw a smaller plane and then scale it. Instead, what we would want to do is erase this out. And we would want to draw this in here with the proper measurements. So we would take this and right click and adjust it. And we would set this to have a width of 25 feet and a height of 20 feet. And then we'll go ahead and we'll move our work plane so it lines up at this corner. Now this is sized properly and the grid is sized properly. So just be careful that you're doing that the proper way if you want to use the sizing of the grid with work plane. So the planes automatically come in locked, meaning you can't edit them, but you can unlock them if you'd like by right clicking and selecting the unlock options. One cool thing about work plane is that you can use it in conjunction with intersect with model to split geometry in SketchUp. Note that when you do this, this does not split the work plane geometry, just the SketchUp geometry it's intersected with. Um, big thanks to Adam Hales for this idea. I'll link to his original video for work plane from years ago where he talked about how to do this. The disk work plane allows you to create a round work plane. The nice thing about this is it allows you to dictate the number of segments and rings in the disk, meaning you can make up the you can make up different angles using this disk in order to adjust your inferencing. This can let you dictate angles as well as giving you a guide plane.
Finally, the last tool, the Protractor tool. This is an interesting tool for me. I'm not 100% sure that I'd use it all that much, but basically it lets you create an object with a number of different protractor lines that you can then inference to. These seem to come in at 15 degree angles and don't really seem to be that adjustable. Overall, I like the idea of bringing in work planes in your model as guides. As many of you have seen in the past, a lot of the time what I've done is just drawn a guide canvas, which is like a flat plane, um, but then I have to worry about geometry merging and everything else. I think this is better just because it gives you something that really doesn't affect your geometry other than your inferencing. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Was this helpful to you? Can you see yourself using this extension? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.